Coming up next, she is not from Chicago land. <laughs> she's from, uh, Ernie's, uh, Ernie hates People that. People get real testy about that. <laughs> He's, she's not from Chicago land, she's from Chicago Chi Town. Give it up for Janet. <laughs> because Scars Publications, which I work for that does two literary magazines, is releasing two volumes of, based on a suggestion from Tom Woodruff, poems for every holiday and event in a calendar year. And I'm holding in my hand a proof copy of the first one, every event of the year, the uh, volume one, January through June. It's got this groovy, cool little, I gotta show it off for everybody. It's got this groovy, cool, it looks, I'm the vegetarian and it's got this leather bound looking cover, which I find so funny, but it's a cool looking thing. And, and it's every event of the year. And it's only through January through June, and it's already over 200 pages. That's why it was split into two volumes. And this is a proof copy for it. There are like a select few errors in it, but, <laughs> it, well, I mean, I noticed it said ever event of the year on one page. I'm like, yeah. well, I'll have to fix yeah. that, but, um, but anyway, it is available for sale on Amazon with no typos. And uh, if somebody wants to grab this copy off my hands, you're more than welcome to it. I'm going to pick three from different events through the calendar year on this one. I hope you appreciate them. This first one was written on Martin Luther King Jr. Day. I was like, I've got to come up with something because, you know, I'm writing something every day. And I thought this would be a good one. Our color, our gender, our creed. There is a house inside of me. It's a house with a rich heritage, brimming with the knowledge of how our souls have flourished and how it can be so quickly taken away. There is a house inside of me that I've had to shut down, to hide everything away because those who didn't look like me decided that I was nothing and treated me accordingly. There is a house inside of me. Its pulse has an infectious rhythm that we've had to stifle to hide from your generic white bread mentality. We only let it out when we're alone to, to save us from your madness. There is a house inside of me. I, I've hidden it away. I've sealed it up and placed it deep within brimming with my history and my future, and I don't let it out when people can't think of me as human. There is a house inside of me. I've put boards over the windows to save myself from your wrath. With your wrath, I've learned to not fight back, only because my captor won't let me. There is a house inside of me and this house will stand strong after you have raped me, beaten me, tortured me, tried to kill me, treated me as nothing, but you were so wrong. There is a house inside of me, and what you don't realize is that this house will outlast yours. Trust me. If your house is built on distrust and such blatant disrespect, then your house is bound to collapse. Because after all this time, and after my wanting to fight, I have learned that passive aggression is only a part of my story. Because in these struggles, I have gained a wisdom and a, and a consciousness that is beyond this house inside of me, beyond this sharing, this inquisitive understanding. So, I want you to remember, this house is a symbol for all like me, and all of those not like me, too. Because I have a dream that everyone who has suffered like this, and even those who have not, should share their stories with all of the world, no matter our color, our gender, our creed. This is my dream because this is how we truly grow. And 
I'm sorry, I've picked two more that are m equally sad and moody and different kinds of themes, but they're just a lot of different things that happen in almost every day of the calendar year. This is on Endangered Species Day, which I believe is the third day, the third Saturday in May or something. It's in here. But this poem is here for you, and it's called Last Before Extinction. Now he has so many opportunities. He has nothing to lose. Oh, why not come out of the wilderness, attack everything it sees, kill something, suck the blood out, make him feel alive for once more. Let them try to restrain him. He has nothing to lose. And for now, it can fly to the highest redwood, look out over the world, despise the world, the, the world that made him be alone, leaving him alone. Who will carry his name? Who will care for him when he is old? Who can he read bedtime stories to? And now it can feel death creeping upon him closer and closer. He wants to scream. He calls upon nature. The tides rise. Earthquakes shatter homes. He does not feel vindicated. He is lost. And for now, she can swim to the deepest, darkest cave in the Pacific, hide from the solitude, swim lower and lower. Can she find where all the other animals of dying species hide? Can she find them? Uh, there must be others. They can understand. They can live together at the bottom of the earth. Could they show their pain for their species, share what is left of their love, create a new race? Soon, they will be no more, and we will be taking their bones, reassembling them, studying their form, rebuilding their lives, revering them more than we ever did in life. This is what it all becomes. This is what it all boils down to. Study the bones. Study the mistakes. Study the bones. Show you where I'm going on with the different calendar dates. This one was written for D-Day. And this is called One by One the Beech Trees Fell. I have lived at this grove all my life. The beautiful trees have always lined the roads. The, the beech trees even line the drive to my home. Everything was blooming by the end of May when Hugh came in from the coast to go over to our home and the war didn't touch here. Could hear noise in the distance one morning. He told me that some trees have already been felled on General Field Marshal's urgent orders. Rommel was sure that an attack was imminent. He couldn't leave trees for enemy hideouts, so they fell our trees, one by one looked out over our, out our front door, saw our stripped land. <laughs> These trees have souls, and no one is mourning the loss of a species with roots on this land longer than we. <laughs> they didn't do this everywhere. I hear that they left some trees up in fields so glider planes could be destroyed while landing. <laughs> Which lives are worth saving, I wonder, as the soldiers continue doing their job after the beech trees fell. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Alright, give it up for Janet!